guys. Happy Friday. Woo-woo. Can you hear my music? I don't even know. I was about to turn it off here real quick, but you know what? This is how I amp myself up for a Friday. Let me know if you're live with me. Let's go. It's one of my favorite Tiesto songs. Anyone else a big fan of Tiesto? Can you hear me? Let me know if you're live with me. Give me a, hey, Kristen, what's up? If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay, and we're going to let's go. Hello, happy Friday. It's been a little while since I've been live here in the Health and Weight Loss for Foodies group. My CMW clients, you see me live at least once a week in the private community, but it's been a while since I've done one of my good, bad, and the truth series, and I wanted to hop on here. I'm feeling in a good mood today. All right, let me turn the music off. Fine. Spotify, this is like one of my daily playlists. Um, anyone else love to play music in their house? Um, anyone else work from home and sometimes you need a little push to get through the work day? That's why I had my music on. All right, you guys, so the reason why I am talking about sourdough, hold on, <laughs> sourdough, um, is because I always get lots of questions about bread in general. Um, and yes, I love sourdough bread and I think sourdough bread has, I don't know, I feel like it's become more, way more mainstream in the last few years. Um, and I just, I don't know if that's just me personally, but, um, I hear people talking about it all the time. I get lots of questions about it. Like which sourdough bread is the best, you know, how can you be eat it, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk about this topic today and give you the lowdown, the good, the bad, and the truth about sourdough bread. So yeah, I'm going to be speaking specifically about sourdough bread today, but I will talk a little bit about bread in general as well. Um, but before I begin about this topic, I wanted everyone to know, in case you didn't know, today is National Drink Wine Day. Okay, so if you're going to celebrate, drop a wine emoji here in the comments, okay? Um, I actually celebrated last night with my book club. Um, we love to drink wine, talk about books. Uh, so I definitely, I, to me, it's National Drink Wine Day every day. <laughs> Anyone else feel the same way? Hashtag food freedom, right? Um, but yeah, wine and bread go very well together. So I guess this is a great topic. I should be having some wine, but in instead, I'll be drinking my water. Here's a reminder for you to drink your water. Anyone else a Penn State grad? I think I have a few here in the group. Um, I know Danielle, the dietitian for CMW, she's a Penn State grad. Um, so Danielle, that's for us, okay? So let me see who's live with me before I jump in. Give me a shout out. I see there's people watching. Let me know who, are you, who you are, where you're from, why you're interested in this topic, how much do you love sourdough bread, what sourdough bread do you like the most. I want to hear all of it. And you guys, just so you guys know a little bit about my history with sourdough bread. So if you watch my Instagram, Create My Weight, also Fitness of Kristen is my personal account. Um, every Saturday, I call it Sourdough Saturday. I go to my local bakery here in Delray Beach, Florida. It's called Amar Bakery. It's actually a Mediterranean bakery, and they make this amazing sourdough bread. So in the past, they used to only make it on Saturday and Sunday. So I used to just go on Saturday, but now they make it every day of the week. So I still only go and get it like once a week. But do I eat bread every single day? Absolutely not. Will I finish that whole loaf of bread in a week? No. Um, and there's reasons for that. And so again, I want to educate you guys. And that's the whole reason why I do these trainings, the good, the bad, and the truth. And like I said, I know it's been a hot minute since I've been here, but CMW truly is all about education. Those of you who are in CMW currently, or you've been a member of CMW before, comment here in the chat how much we focus on education in CMW, right? Because we want you guys to be crystal clear on the nutrition facts and what foods work for your body, not what works for the status quo or what your friend does or what your mom does or what Weight Watchers tells you to do, right? So CMW is all about figuring out your recipe for success, okay? And sourdough may or may not be a part of that. And so today I'm going to give you the facts give you information, and then you get to choose, right? And that's what CMW is all about. We, in our team of experts, we give you all the facts, we you know clarify things for you, and then we guide you in the right direction, right? And then it's up to you to make the right choices and follow through, and of course, we help you in that process as well. We hold you accountable, we help change your mindset. Um, so it truly is an educational, but also extremely rewarding experience because you learn what works for you long-term, okay? So comment in the chat if you're ready to learn what works for you long term what nutrition works for your body and to get answers hashtag get answers comment below in the chat i want to see you 
okay? Maybe I'll even reach out to you and say, hey, I've got some answers for you. I love to answer questions. Um, I was an educator for over 10 years. A lot of you guys know that. Um, I worked with integrative nutrition for a little while as well with coaches and students. And so, you know, part of learning and growing is asking questions and getting your questions answered. So I really hope I answer a lot of your questions today. What I'm gonna do real quickly is step to the side here. I know some of you guys like to take pictures of my notes. Actually, let me turn this way. Is that better? Maybe I'll model like Vanna White. <laughs> you guys wanna take pictures? Okay. Um, of the board. I mean, again, I'm going to add some notes as I'm talking today, but I want to give you guys um, a chance to uh, ask questions as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start, and then I'll answer questions at the end. But here we go the good, the bad, and the truth about sourdough bread. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk about the good, right? And I think some of these are going to be pretty obvious. Um, it's like, for example, um, we know sourdough bread is delicious. Okay, I don't think anyone can deny that. Um, what's really good about this bread is, of course, the texture. It toasts easily. Um, it has that nice, like, crispy crust, and then it's soft on the inside. Oh my God, love sourdough. Um, and it's super easy to find, right? Every grocery store has a form of sourdough. Um, if you don't have a bakery close by, I always recommend getting it fresh as possible at the bakery because there's going to be way less preservatives, and that's always better um, for your body. But, you know, it, what, why sourdough bread got popular, okay, is because it technically, and guys, this is totally arguable, um, has less gluten in it, okay? And so people ask, well, how is that possible, okay? So sourdough bread, the fermentation process of the yeast, okay, is what makes it considered sourdough, right? There's a certain starter that they use to make the bread. And so the fermentation process of the yeast actually breaks down a lot of the gluten. It is not gluten-free. I wanna be very clear, sourdough bread, most sourdough bread, I wanna say all sourdough bread, someone call, correct me if I'm wrong, but all sourdough bread does have wheat, right? So it's not completely gluten-free, um, but some people who have a gluten intolerance right, they can eat sourdough bread and be fine. But if they were to have like a wheat bread, they would not be okay, okay? Because the wheat bread is gonna have like way more gluten, obviously. So that's why sourdough bread can be considered a healthier alternative because there's less gluten. And as many of you guys probably know, gluten is something that can wreak havoc on your gut, okay? It is an inflammatory um, and it also can cause people to have allergic reactions. Those of you who are celiac or any kind of gluten intolerance, you know, one of my best friends, Leah, she's actually here in the group. Um, she like breaks out like crazy when she eats gluten, right? So, um, and actually, Leah, I'm going to come talk about you a second for a second. She's actually from France. And when she lived in France, she had no problems with gluten, no problems with bread. And then she moved to the U.S., and that's when all her issues started, right? So there really is something about the food supply here in the US. And wheat is one of the most genetically modified crops and also super highly sprayed with pesticides, right? So it's a lot of the food processing, right? And how we grow our crops that have created this crazy gluten issue um, in the United States. And then it is trickling into other countries now as other countries do um, reduce their restrictions on the use of pesticides. So, you know, unfortunately, Europe used to be very strict about their use of pesticides and glyphosate, for example, um, but now they're lowering because of the food demand, right? So it is trickling into countries like Italy and France, FYI. Um, but again, you're gonna find some cleaner products over in those countries. That's why you can go to Italy and go to France and eat bread and croissants and uh, I mean, when I was in Italy and France, I ate all the bread and pizza and I didn't feel terrible. But in the US we do, right? It's that gluten. And that's why in CMW and just in general, everyone here watching, you know, I am encouraging you to be as gluten free as possible. I love the um, approach with nutrition, nudge, don't judge. So I can give, you know, advice. Um, gluten doesn't serve anybody, you know, um, but again, it's up to you. You know, I know it's hard to be completely gluten-free, but in our society, is it possible? Absolutely. You know, I have a lot of friends who are gluten-free, a lot of restaurants are catering to gluten-free clients, and there's, and there's lots of products on the market now that are gluten-free that are super, super good. And I know in general, when I am gluten-free, 
um, I feel much better. Um, if you're into tennis, right now we have a big uh, Delray Tennis Open going on right now. Uh, Novak Djokovic, he's not in the tennis tournament, but he is like a world-renowned, you know, tennis pro. A lot of you guys have known him. Um, you know, he's top in the world for a long time, and he. I mean, people have interviewed him and said, well, how did you get so good? Like, what changes did you make in your game to improve? And one of the things he actually said was he switched to a completely gluten-free diet. And that helped him be more mobile on the course and or on the court, of course. Um, and you see him like in his mobility. So, um, yeah, there's lots of benefits of being gluten-free for sure. Okay. Um, so that's the good about sourdough bread now here's the bad okay these are the things you want to consider and exactly why i do not eat sourdough bread every day of the week actually for that matter if i buy a loaf of sourdough bread and i live by myself you know i will freeze it and it'll take me two to four weeks to eat a whole loaf okay because i really believe in, in moderation everything in moderation um and so here's a couple things you need to consider when it comes to sourdough bread so number one um and this is not just sourdough bread i want to say this about a lot of processed breads in general well all bread is processed um it's very high in sodium okay so if you actually took time if you bought sourdough bread at the grocery store let's say you know you bought um, I know Whole Foods has like a San Francisco sourdough bread they have in their bakery, uh, or sometimes you can buy it like on the shelf. If you look at the sodium content of one slice, okay, it can range from anywhere from like 120 milligrams to like 400 milligrams. Like it's a wide range. And sodium is definitely a number you want to pay attention to. Um, I know anyone who has high blood pressure, maybe any kind of kidney issues, you know, you always want to pay attention to sodium. You want, because you want to be in more, more of a low sodium diet. Um, but for weight loss, you know, if you really are looking to see the number on the scale go down, you know, sodium is something you definitely have to consider. And my clients know we're very big on reading food labels and we pay attention to sodium. So you might think, well, 120 milligrams, that's on the low end, FYI. You know, 120 milligrams of sodium for one slice might not be a big deal. You're totally right. You got to think about it. Like if I'm going to make a sandwich, all right, I'm going to have two slices of bread. That's 240 milligrams of sodium. Then let's pretend I'm going to put deli meat on there. Okay. And as you guys probably all know, most deli meats are very high in sodium. You know, a few slices of turkey, for example, I love the brand Applegate. It's one of my absolute favorites. They are hormone free and abiotic free. Um, you know, two or three slices of, of deli meat from them is still about 300 milligrams of sodium. So I got that. And then if I want to put cheese on my sandwich, cheese is going to be high in sodium too. So sandwiches are sodium bombs. And now you're probably thinking, oh my God, Kristen has scared me from having sandwiches ever again. Well, I'm here to tell you that are sandwiches the most healthy foods in the world? No, but I don't want you to think you can't have sandwiches ever because I'm all about food freedom. You guys know that. And so again, you know, if we're going to have a sandwich for lunch, you know, we have to kind of pay attention to our other meals and what our sodium looks like in other areas of our diet. Right. And that's something that we are highly focused on in CMW is looking at the big picture, right? The entire day, not stressing out about a single meal. Okay, and I think that's where a lot of people kind of like get discouraged and they fall off the wagon. They're like, oh, screw it. I'm just not going to try. Um, you can't give up on yourself like that. Right. But my point is, yes, bread can be a very high sodium food. So this is one of the reasons why I don't recommend eating it all the time. Okay. And it's not just sourdough bread. It can be other breads as well. Okay. Um, number two, one of the consequences of sourdough bread is it does have wheat as I was saying earlier. And one of the problems with wheat is that it is really a highly addictive inflammatory ingredient. So gluten is an inflammatory, right? But wheat separately is also an inflammatory, okay? And so um, there's actually a really, really great book um, called Grain, well, there's Grain Brain and then there's Wheat Belly, right? But both of them talk about the effects of wheat on the brain. Right. And so I think it was Dr. Davis, Wayne Davis. He had said that, you know, wheat is effect on the brain is almost as powerful as like an opioid. OK, um, super addictive. So you guys that eat bread all the time and you're craving bread all the time, it's because you're feeding the craving. And the more you give your body something, the more you give your gut flora something, the more your body is going to crave it. OK, so bread is a highly addictive food mostly because of the wheat, but also because of the sodium as well. Okay, so salty foods tend to be highly addictive. So when people tell me they're addicted to chips 
or they're addicted to um I'm trying to think other crunch uh, salty foods people like nuts maybe um Although I don't think an addiction to nuts is the worst thing in the world, but it depends how many you're eating. Uh, so yeah, so that's really why bread can be addicting, right? So it's, and, and again, you know, I want to talk a bit about wheat here because I know, for example, Ezekiel bread, right? Or Dave's killer bread. Um, I get a lot of questions about those breads. Well, I thought like David's bread is, is good, you know? And I'm like, yeah, again, but it's, it's wheat, you know? So if you really are suffering from bloating, you have digestive issues, you know, you're, you have foggy, you know, foggy brain, right? Or you're, you feel foggy. Um, you know, a lot of that can be gluten based, right? Um, so I would recommend cutting it from your diet for a little bit. If you find yourself eating a lot of bread, do an elimination three days, at least three days, three to seven is ideal. Um, then you do a wash, you wait another few days and then you add it back in, see how you feel. You know, the only way to really learn what foods do and do not serve you is to test them. Um, so again, you know, I would definitely recommend minimizing the bread consumption in your diet because of the health effects as well. Okay, so if you're someone who has arthritis or you're with someone with an autoimmune condition, um, you're someone who's really trying to get your gut, you know, in line, eating all the gluten is not going to serve you. I hate to break it to you. Third and final reason why bread is not something I would eat every day is because bread has no nutritional value. Sourdough bread, I'm sp talking about specifically here. Okay, so, you know, usually there's no protein, there's no fiber. Now, here's where I'm going to make an exception. Okay, so I was just talking about Ezekiel sprouted bread or sprouted bread in general. So, the difference between sprouted wheat bread, now I know I'm going away from sourdough, but I'll come back in a second. So again, I'm here to educate you. So sprouted wheat bread versus regular wheat bread. So sprouted wheat bread will have more nutrients, okay? So sprouted wheat bread will have actually more amino acids because the, uh, the wheat is not fully processed, right? It's still in its, in its more pure form. Okay, now is this bread still processed? Yes, but not as much as the fully processed refined wheat, right? So there's a difference between refined wheat and sprouted wheat. So Ezekiel sprouted, like Food for Life, for example, I love their English muffins, they're super delicious. They do have some fiber and they do have some protein in them. Okay, so they're more filling, right? So the, those kind of wheat products, right? If you can tolerate gluten, if you have to be gluten free, you should not be eating any of this, right? But um, you know, sprouted um, food for life, Ezekiel, um, those have the sprouted uh, wheat, so it's gonna be a better option. Um, Dave's Killer Bread, um, I don't, I'm not positive, you have to correct me here if it's sprouted. Um, if it's not, it's just like a regular wheat bread, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> so um, I do know that some of the David's Killer Breads add sugar to them. Okay, so you have to read the labels. And you also have to check labels pretty frequently, guys, um, because sometimes companies, they might market like no high fructose corn syrup, you know, and they have their claims to fame. And then a few months later, they change their story, right? They change their recipe to cut costs or because of increased demand, whatever it is. So you have to be reading labels. I was just talking to a client about this a few minutes ago. So um, being mindful and advocating for yourself by educating yourself on what you're actually eating. Okay, so long story short, most bread does not have no, any nutritional value. Sourdough bread has no nutritional value whatsoever. There's no fiber, there's no protein. Hate to break it to you, <laughs> okay? Um, now, I want to go to the truth. Okay, I wanna to start to wrap this up here about sourdough bread. So, like I was saying in the beginning of the video today, that the best sourdough bread is gonna come from a local bakery, right? It's less of a carbon footprint, number one. Um, so it's the freshest, right? Um, and number two, there's gonna be way less preservatives. Um, so that, and it's usually gonna be the cleanest bread that you can get. Um, the second thing we need to understand and I said this earlier, you know, yeah, sourdough bread may be a better option because there might be less gluten, um, but it's not like a daily, you know, food, okay? Um, so for example, one of my favorite pizza places here, actually, um, it's not a gluten-free crust, but they do have a 48-hour fermentation process with the caputo flour that they use. So I can eat that pizza and not feel gross after and inflamed <laughs> um, because of the fermentation process of that pizza. So that's kind of similar idea to sourdough bread, right? Um, now, this is also another truth, and this is something I talk a lot about in CMW. There are better carbs okay, then breads available. Better carbs and breads available. I'm gonna talk about this for a second. So for example, you know, I would almost recommend an entirely gluten-free bread, 
over sourdough bread, okay? Because I know, and I'm sure a lot of people might resonate with this, and comment in the chat if this is you, if you agree with me that, you know, gluten does not serve you, okay? Um, now, I'm Italian and Puerto Rican, so I grew up on bread and carbs, and I still consume it, but I know I feel better when I do a gluten-free bread versus a sourdough bread, for sure. I do have some of my favorite gluten-free breads. Um, Whole Foods actually has a great 365 brand gluten-free bread. It's not frozen, it's actually in the regular bread section, so it's soft, your kids will love it. I will say it's higher in sodium, right? Because most breads, the sodium is to preserve the bread on the shelf, right? So sodium is a preservative. Um, Walmart, okay, Walmart grocery. I've actually been um, popping into my own uh, CMW private community and sharing more of my grocery trips and more products. And I have a Walmart super uh, neighborhood grocery store close to my house here. Um, and I love the Sam's gluten-free bread. Uh, delish, again, you wanna be mindful of sodium. I forget the exact sodium count, but it's pretty high. Um, so you just wanna be mindful in how often you eat it. But um, I definitely would like a gluten-free bread over sourdough as much as possible. Okay, um, I like Canyon Bakehouse. They have a good gluten-free bread as well. Okay, um, and most importantly to understand, guys, you can absolutely still eat bread and lose weight, tone up, whatever your goals are. And that is exactly you know what CMW is about. Like we want to show you that you don't have to give up your favorite foods, like bread. I saw a lot of you commenting that you love sourdough bread or just bread in general, and I know a lot of people love carbs, right? So comment below if you love carbs. Hashtag I love carbs, right? Or comment below with like your favorite carb, you know, cake, cookies, bread, whatever. Okay, they're all carbs, fruits a carb. Um, so, you know, you can still eat all these foods, guys, and lose weight. And I have clients, you know, who eat bread and butter for breakfast. I had a client, Karen, you know, she was 70 years old, and she, her sister hired me to help um, her lose weight, and she had a bagel with butter every morning. And you know what? That was, like, one thing that she was really kind of non-negotiable with, but a lot of other things she was willing to modify. And she ate a bagel with butter for breakfast. It was not gluten-free. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not sourdough, but she still lost 40 pounds. It's very doable, okay? So you can still have bread, um, you can still have these foods um, and still reach your goals, okay? And that is the absolute truth. Um, and if anyone tells you otherwise, they don't have a system. They don't have a plan um, or they're gonna tell you to count every macro and every carb you're putting in your body and that sucks and who wants to do that? We don't do that in CMW. So um, if you are looking to learn more about how to incorporate bread into your life, um, some better options for you um, in a way that supports your health, weight loss, fitness goals, whatever you're trying to pursue, um, drop a comment below or you can book a call with me, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. You know, we in the CMW team are here to help you, like I mentioned before, get really clear on what foods serve you and how to be successful for life. We are always thinking two steps ahead of you. You know, so if you want to lose 20 pounds, that's great. But I'm already thinking about where are you six months from now? How are you going to maintain that weight loss? How sustainable is this way of eating for you and this way of moving and this way of thinking and this way of being? What we do consistently is who we will become. Okay. So as we become more educated on foods, you know, this is why I'm very much about education. And in CMW, we have, like I mentioned, a team of experts. We're teaching you how to cook. We're teaching you how to lighten up your meals. We're teaching you how to change recipes. We're, cha we're teaching you how to order out. And if you want to have that pizza, you want to have an avocado toast, you want to have a breakfast sandwich, awesome, right? How do you do that and still lose weight in the process? And then how do you maintain your weight loss? That's what we're here for, all right, to support you in that journey because it's not an easy journey but it's completely doable with the right system and the right plan. All right, so if you're ready for a plan, drop below hashtag I'm ready, hashtag plan, hashtag let's go, like the song I started with in the beginning of this training. Okay, it's Friday, let's make things happen. I want you to drop your big takeaway from today's training. What did you learn? What's something you're gonna remember over the weekend? What's one thing you're gonna pick up at the grocery store this weekend based on our conversation? What's one thing you're gonna change out of your pantry? What's a quick swap you're gonna make? What did you learn? Information does not lead to transformation without action. So I don't want you to leave here today without taking action, okay? 
Maybe you took notes, write that down. I took notes, Kristen, awesome. And then I'm gonna go to the grocery store and pick up that bread you mentioned, cause it sounds awesome. Or you know what, I'm eating bread every single day. I'm gonna try to cut back to a few days a week. I'm gonna swap out this bread for this bread. I'm gonna cut out bread for a few days and see how I feel, cause my stomach's been bothering me. Comment with your big action step. That's what we're about in CMW is taking massive action. Because I can sit here and talk to you all day long and people can tell you what to do, but how are you gonna show up for yourself? Comment below with how you're gonna show up for yourself. And if you're not showing up for yourself and you want some guidance in how to show up for yourself, or you want someone to give you confidence that you can show up for yourself in long term, okay? Book a call with me, all right? Createmyway.com forward slash apply. Or you'll talk to me or you'll talk to someone on my team who will tell you exactly what your game plan should look like. We'll talk about your strategy for success, not what Susie's doing or what Kim's doing or what Jeannie's doing, but what you should be doing because you are unique. In CNW, we always say we love cookies, but nothing we do is cookie cutter. No two people eat the same. And you can create your success story. So if you're ready to create your success story, comment below, I'm ready. Hashtag success story. What will that look like? How will that feel to say, I am a success story. I inspire others and I inspire myself. That's the best feeling in the world. Okay, you can do it, let's go. All right, happy Friday, happy weekend. Let me know if this was valuable. Should I pop in here and do another one? Was this valuable for you guys? Do you miss the good, the bad, and the truth? Let me know, okay? I'm here for you. All right, have a great weekend. Bye, see ya.